Hello everyone! Season 4 is upon us, and there are a lot of balance changes, weapon changes, and new enemies to go over. So let's start this off with the weapon changes. The Sabata got a lot of love in this update. It has been given a 2 round burst gear mod, a better corrosive gear mod in tier 5 that pairs nicely with the sludge pump, and blow through rounds, also in tier 5. The Sabata tranquilizer rounds overclock also got the ability to slow enemies who are immune to being stunned, so it makes the overclock still usable against those bugs. Pretty good. The Boomstick Double Barrel Overclock got changed from a clean to a balanced. The reason being is because they changed the small damage bonus it got to being a front shockwave damage bonus. Pairing this with the improved shockwave gear mod in tier 4, you can do some heavy ass damage. The added downsides though is you have an increase in base spread. The Cryo Cannon got some love with the Snowball Overclock, making the enemies that were frozen by the Snowball attack can't warm up for a short period of time after getting affected. This is a nice change, giving you the ability to freeze more of the bugs that break out of the ice and killing them a lot faster. The Drax Shield Battery Booster Overclock also got some love with the ability to recharge your battery a lot faster once losing it. And with the combined shield regen mod, you get your shield back in literally a second. So that's really cool. The Hurricane got a new overclock called Rocket Barrage, which is so much fun because it shoots really fast, but it can chew through your ammo pretty quickly. So just be aware of that. Manual Guidance Cutoff System has been sent to the Shadow Realm and the Plasma Burster Overclock got a rework and is a whole lot better now. And from the videos I have watched on it, I also cannot wait to make a video on this overclock for myself. <laughs> so stay tuned for that one as well. The Thunderhead also got some love with Carpet Bomber, getting its explosion and damage bonuses changed from a flat number to a percentage, meaning it will properly be gaining more damage from the gear mods when applying them to the Thunderhead with the overclock. So that's pretty cool. Neurotoxin Payload also got changed with the AOE bonuses getting pushed back just a bit. But the overclock no longer takes away the direct damage from the gun. Now this makes the Neurotoxin Payload deal more damage, but you're also losing out on some of those AOE advantages. And that's really all about it from the balance changes for the weapons. Other than the spinning death got a little bit less of a reduction in the ammo pool. Other than that, that's, that's really about it. Now on to the new enemies, starting with the Stingtail. The new grabby boy that got added is honestly really fun. It doesn't seem too unfair to play against this thing and really makes you think where you're going to stand the next time when an ambush is coming for you. The new Septus Spreader is a freaky looking dude that shoots foam like globs at you, kind of like this corrosive sludge pump that will deal massive damage to both when hitting the dwarf and when stepped on when it's left on the ground. These goobers are really fun to fight against as well, and I'm glad they added something that gives you area denial and makes you think about where you're going to be moving. I'm also really grateful for this, Ghost Ship Games. They added more Rockpox enemies, so it makes the Lithophage outbreak actually feel like an outbreak amongst the bugs, with the Acid Spitters, Sploders, Bombers, and Corrupted Breeders now infected it just adds a nice mix to the mutator that I never knew I wanted to happen. The Corruptor, or Herald deemed by the community, is the new big bad of this season. Like how the Prospector and the Nemesis was for seasons 1 and 2, the Corruptor at first wasn't my cup of tea, mainly because it was a new enemy, and I didn't know how to fight him. Then over time uh, in the beta, I learned how to somewhat go up against the Corruptor, and I think it's safe to say that I actually really enjoy fighting this weird corrupted thing of mass. The new jet boots are really nice for the other classes other than Scout. Finally, some more versatility to move around in the caves with. I will say though, the boots were annoying in the beginning of the beta since you couldn't really strafe with them, but it seems since then they have been patched and feel way better to move around in the air with. The new cosmetics that we got in the performance pass are amazing. I really like a lot of the new beards, mustaches, masks, and colors for the weapons and armor that we got. 
I also like this new season's weapon frame in the cosmetic tree, the infected weapon frame, which I already love using with the fiery or the rusted paint job colors. Overall, I really like season 4 of Deep Rock Galactic. They may have just added two bugs, but those two bugs make a whole difference in how you play this game against those new bugs and with the old bugs as well. The Corruptor is a really nice added mini boss that you can fight in the caves that isn't too hard nor too easy either. The new Lithophage bugs are a nice breath of corrupted air that I never knew I needed or wanted for the Lithophage outbreak to begin with, and the balance changes for the guns, though I wish Engineer did get a bit more love for like the Warthog or the Stubby. Albeit, it was still nice for what we got for the Sabata, Boomstick, and Hurricane that will definitely keep me playing. I'd say that this season is really, really good, and I've been having a whole lot of fun so far. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I do appreciate those who stuck till the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you didn't subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Rock and stone, miners.